Hello, my name is Lorraine Burgett. This is part two of a presentation that was given f at the organic apple production session held at the New England Vegetable and Fruit Conference in Manchester, New Hampshire on December 15th, 2011. It is part two of the presentation on the research objectives and overview of the Organica project. Orchard 2 is the top grafted orchard. This orchard was originally planted in 1988 with Macintosh and Liberty and M26 rootstocks. The tree spacing, uh, the tree row spacing is 10 feet by 15 feet. In 2006, a Vermont apple grower who is very good in grafting came to the orchard and grafted the existing trees with the five cultivars. So now the original cultivar, Macintosh or Liberty, is the interstem of each tree. Since we do, did not know whether the original cultivar would have an impact on graft survival or tree performance, we used an experimental design that can detect whether the different original cultivar has an impact on tree growth and the other variables we are measuring. We used a randomized complete block experimental design where the blocks relate to the original cultivar, either Macintosh or Liberty. The orchard map is shown in the next slide. The questions we have had in we had in setting up the design of this orchard were, are there differences among the cultivars in initial s survival of the science? Do certain cultivars perform better than others over time in a grafting, top grafting situation? Does what you graft onto, in this case Macintosh or Liberty, impact cultivar growth and producti productivity over time? This is the color-coded orchard map. There are 190 trees. They were, they were grafted. These trees are located in three rows. Again, each um, box represents a tree. The tree row spacing is 10 feet by 15. And as I mentioned, we did um, set up a uh, have a block design where there's eight reps in block one and uh, 11 reps in block two. Each replication is a, has two trees in it. The color code um, is the same as in the f in Orchard 1, Ginger Gold being yellow, Honeycrisp white, Liberty orange, Macallan blue, Zestar pink. As you can see, a number of trees have died in this orchard. Those are the areas that have been blackened out. These trees are usually um, Zestar or Macallan, and Dr. Garcia will be talking about tree growth and survival and the differences in, cu in cultivars in her presentation. In this slide, you can see um, Orchard 2 as it appeared in 2011. Quite a difference from the cut trunk with the graft of scions in 2006. We have had some challenges in this or organic or orchard. As the previous map showed, trees have died in this orchard. And um, in each year, some, some of the trees have had to be pulled out. The story of what cultivars are not doing as well as others has changed over the years. First, it seemed like Zestar, we had more problems with Zestar, but then that seems to have settled down, and now Macallan seems to be the cultivar that is um, having some more problems in terms of, of, of growth and survival. Again, Dr. Garcia will be touching upon this in her presentation. You can see in, in that we collect a lot of data. These are just e topics, uh, areas in which we uh, collect data. Um, the presentations by Dr. Garcia, Dr. Moran, and Terrence Bradshaw will um, cover specifics of uh, the results of the data collection. We collect data on disease, arthropod pest damage, beneficial arthropods, horticultural data, measurements of soil health, and economic inputs. In order to get the qu at the questions listed on this slide, is organic apple production profitable and sustainable in New England with the knowledge and tools we have in orchards with these specific cultivars? And will there be a long-term difference in profitability between the two organic orchard production systems under the study? We, we, we take detailed r records of uh, inputs in e each of the orchards. Every time anyone walks into the orchard to, does any to do anything, it is recorded and those sheets then are analyzed. We'll be touching upon the economics in the discussion part of this morning's session. The Orchard received organic certification in 2008. 
And since then, we've had three um, years of harvest data covering the early bearing years of the two orchards, 2009 and, and two, through 2011, and that's the results we will be presenting today. In each of the orchards, we have incorporated current IPM techniques to monitor insect and mite populations to determine if thresholds have been reached. We have conducted cultural practices that reduce potential overwintering and inoculum of apple scab. You can see the results of the flail mowing in the center picture. And we perform other recommended practices such as proper pruning, training, sanitation, proper nutrition, proper irrigation that will impact or influence disease in insects. We have used computer models that incorporate weather data to track development of insect, various insects and to determine infection periods for apple scab and fire blight. When intervention is warranted, we have used accepted organically approved fungicides and insecticides. Terry Bradshaw will be pre presenting the IPM integrated pest management research results. We have been looking at differences among the cultivars in incidence and severity of the various pests in the two orchards. The types of horticultural data collected include trunk cross-sectional area, bloom, bloom density, yield, and quality assessment of harvested fruit. Dr. Garcia will be presenting these results. As I mentioned, over the course of the project, we have identified challenges in each orchard. I just wanted to quickly highlight the third area of research which we have started in the second phase of the project is listed as the third bullet on this slide. Based on a number of factors that appear to be challenges in Orchard 1 and 2, such as less than expected growth in Orchard 1, high European red mite populations and fruit rots in both orchards, which may be associated at least in part with the use of sulfur or lime sulfur in these orchards, we started to plan for an addi additional orchard that would address these challenges, an orchard that would be comprised of the most promising apple cultivars that are scab resistant so we could eliminate scab fungicides. So, in 2011, a new orchard was planted with scab resistant cultivars and we will manage this orchard using organically approved techniques and materials. We are calling this new high-density orchard, Orchard 4. Since this orchard was just planted this past growing season, in 2011, we do not have any results to present today, but stay tuned. The bottom picture shows the location of Orchard 4 with respect to Orchard 1 and Orch Orchard 2. Orchard 2 is on the far right, Orchard 1 is way in the back, and Orchard 4 is, is right up front here. You can see listed on this slide the scab resistant cultivars that were planted in this orchard. These are on M26 rootstock. The spacing is 4 feet by 15 feet. A tall spindle slender, slender pyramid training system is being used. We had planned to have 8 cultivars in this orchard and we originally planted what we thought were Nova Spies in addition to the, the cultivars listed on the slide, but the nursery sent the wrong trees, which we planted, and it turned out they were roams, and we had to pull all of the roams out. So that was a bit of a disappointment. I do want to mention quickly that there is an active extension outreach component to the project. The extension outreach part of the project includes this website. The presentations have been uploaded to the web from the New England Vegetable and Fruit Conference, and other presentations have been uploaded to the website. We will be uploading in the near, very near future a resource entitled A Practical Guide to Organic Apple Production. Also on the website are the archived Orchard Observations, which is a blog of what is happening in the organic orchards during the growing season. Orchard observations are sent out to people who are on our Organica listserv during the growing season. And, and as I mentioned, they are archived on the web. These are just two pages from the orchard observations that were sent out on July 26th of, of 2011. There were two more additional pages of pictures and text. If you'd like to get on the listserv, just send me an email and indicate you would like to be put on the Organica email list. The list is not shared. I use it to send out orchard observations and notices of meetings and other appropriate information. 
My email address is on the bottom of this slide. The outreach component of the project also includes orchard tours, demonstrations, and workshops. We continue to seek your input on what types of out outreach you would like to have and what types of information you would like that would enhance your production of organic apples. If you have any comments or suggestion suggestions, please send them to me at my email address. Again, it's lorraine.burkett at uvm.edu. I do want to thank you for your attention. Now it's time to get into um, the research results. Listed here on, on this slide are the additional presentations that were given at the organic apple production session at the New England Vegetable and Fruit Conference, which was held in Manchester, New Hampshire on December 15th, 2011. These have been uploaded to the web and are there for your viewing and listening. Thank you very much for your attention.